Hi everyone and welcome to Flipping Heck Business, Flip Learning for AQA A-Level Business Studies. Uh, we are now on video number two of Unit 4, Decision Making to Improve Operational Performance. So what we're going to be looking at in this video in particular is capacity and capacity utilization. Now, this it will be looking at the meaning and importance, uh, capacity utilization, how it can be used efficiently, uh, like different capacity levels, under utilization, then some considerations at the end. So once again, uh, the links. So capacity management links very nicely with efficiency, profitability, unit costs, break even and human resource management. So for any of those larger questions, these are kind of the areas that you can actually be delving into. There are, of course, uh, videos coming up on these if they haven't been done already. So starting off with the definition, so the capacity of a business is a measure of how much input it can achieve in a given period without buying any more fixed assets, so anything like machinery, factory space, etc. So in other words, it's how many like items or how like much like uh, product can actually produced in any kind of period of time. So whether it's monthly, yearly, etc., etc. So if we're thinking about it, so if we're really looking at it, then you'd be looking at like things like capacity for a restaurant that may be able to seat 100 people at a time. So they can only seat 100 people. They won't be able to go any further than that. Uh, if you look at B, B Sky B call center in Gallagate, uh, then they can handle over 10,000 calls per day. Uh, if you're a city fan, then the Etihad Stadium can seat 63,000 supporters per match. No more, but usually it's less. And then the Nissan Sunderland can produce more than 507,000 cars per year. So that's what we're talking about when talking about capacity. It's how much of a particular unit of uh, like that your company actually produces, how much it can actually produce over that time. So capacity is actually quite a dynamic concept. So it can change. So if you've got things like, uh, say you've got machinery that's gone down or you have tables out of commission or you have uh, like, say with uh, like a football stadium, then maybe you've shut down one particular area, then that's gonna change your capacity like potential. And capacity is very much linked to labor as well. So by working more, like so if you get like more shifts going or you hire more people, then you can actually increase your capacity. So it could drop easily when you have anything like maintenance uh, or it can like go up if you start producing more or utilizing the machines properly. So it needs to take account of seasonal or unexpected changes in demand as well. So I mean, like things like chocolate factories need to uh, need capacity to make Easter eggs in November and December before shipping them to shops after Christmas, all ready for the actual Easter. Uh, then you've got ice cream factories. So in the UK, they need to quickly increase capacity during heat waves and then allow it to reduce down again. And it's kind of like looking at how they actually would achieve these like scenarios. Now, capacity utilization, so it's the proportion, it's a percentage of the business's capacity that is actually being used over the specific period. So whenever we look at capacity utilization, then it should be uh, like uh, expressed as a percentage. Now, the formula for it is actual level of output divided by the maximum possible output times 100. So you are finding the percentage that a business is actually working at at that time by small, usually small. So actual level of output divided by the maximum level times 100. So you can see here's an example. So we've got Dodgy Dave's Dungarees. So they manufacture 90s jeans. So you can see there, there is a lovely character wearing a pair of dungarees. So Dave's factory is capable of producing 145,000 dungarees a month. But Last month, they produced 125,000 dungarees. So again, if we go back to the capacity utilization formula, then you've got the capacity utilization is the actual output divided by the potential output times 100. Here we've got 
125,000 divided by 145,000 times 100 equals 86%. Uh, I would usually round this up to uh, to like uh, up or down to the nearest percent, like actually have it working that way. If you are going to like put decimals in, then just do it to two places maximum. Now, most companies would seem to think that actually working at 100% capacity is the best solution. So obviously you don't want to have any people who are not pulling their weight. You don't want to have any machinery that's not working. Uh, you don't want to like be not using all the resources available to actually produce everything that you can. But the truth is that actually, while you do want it to remain high, actually working at 100% has its own problems. So I mean like working at say around 90 to 95% actually works a lot better simply because it's very difficult to maintain quality at 100%. If you are actually trying to push your machines or push your people, it can cause a lot of stress and you end up with like actually people maybe not doing the job that they can do because they're trying to meet targets. But if you had it at 90%, then actually there's a little bit of room there and people might be stressed like might not be stressing they'll make less mistakes it also means that you wouldn't be turning away customers so if you were say a restaurant then if you are not big enough or you haven't got your tables laid out in the right way so that you've got enough tables available then people would turn up and if you're at 100 percent capacity you've got a full restaurant turn people away they may not come back and that works for uh, big shipment orders as well. Uh, if they, if you've got, say, a small company and you put, right, well, we can produce 150 products a day and someone comes along and goes, right, well, we need a thousand orders for tomorrow, then you're not going to be able to meet that actual requirement. And that could be an issue. Would the people come back to you? Probably not. They'll go to one of your competitors who can meet that need. Now, it would also mean that there is no downtime for the machines. So there could be a real serious issue with regards to maintenance. There could be a lack of repairs. And then if a machine does break, what will happen is everything else will still carry on running. And you'll end up with a big backlog waiting for that machine to be fixed before it can all be processed through, which actually could take a lot longer. And the machines could break down a lot more often as well. Also, there's no margin of error. So everything needs to be right first time, because if you've got to redo an order, then you haven't got that kind of buffer zone of, uh, right, okay, well, we need to redo something, then it means that we can just sort of put it back into the system and get it done again. It could actually be sent back. You could end up having to, like, uh, give the refunds on the product and still give the product out as well. And it just causes stress. And there, again, that's where mistakes can come into it. Also, you can't increase demand if the goods are seasonal or it's a one-off order. So if you are, again, if you look at Cadbury's, if they were working to 100% capacity all the time, all year, then what would happen when they've got to get ready with the Easter eggs for Easter? Then they wouldn't be able to sort of move people around. They wouldn't be able to like sort of pull out some of the machinery and really start to up the amount of production that's required because they would have actually been working at the full rate that they can work at all year or anyway. And then if output is greater than demand, then there will be surplus stock. So if you're actually working at 100%, but demand is only at about 80%, then you're going to end up building up and building up all the surplus stock. People may not buy it, buy it. And then you've got just wa wasted working capital. That is money that is just sat there, not doing anything, not making any kind of profit for you. So while working at like less than 100% is perfectly you know, acceptable. There are going to be occasions where you may need to actually work at more than 100%. Now I hear you, you're there going like, Dave, you can't work at more than 100%. 100% is the maximum. Well, there are certain things that you can do. It's If you were working at 100% capacity and someone brought in an extra order for you, you're not just going to turn it away because again, they could go to a rival. So you've got to work out, well, what can I actually do? So you could do things like you could increase workforce hours so you could get extra shifts going. You could encourage people to work overtime. You could hire in temporary staff. You could subcontract some of the production activities so you could actually send it to another company to fulfill your order. Now, they would obviously charge you and that would cost you money. But if the extra order is worth it, then that is perfectly reasonable to do. You could increase your productivity, so move staff around, allocate more staff to busier areas and remove them from quieter areas. 
Uh, try and make sure that you've got enough staff that are multi-talented or like have multiple skills that they can utilize in other areas. You could buy more machinery. So if you've got the staff and you've got the space and you can afford to run them, then yeah, get another machine in because then you would actually increase your overall capacity and you could actually be working more. And it's all part of the sort of deal with regards to businesses wanting to grow. Uh, you could reduce uh, time spent on maintaining the production equipment. So in other words, you could actually like just sort of make sure that products are working already. Uh, sorry, machinery is working already and then, you know, reduce it down. Now, that would come with the risk of if the machine does break because you're not spending as much time as you need on it. Well, then what could happen? It could break down. Uh, someone could get injured uh, or you might break down and you wouldn't even be able to fill any of those orders, which again is lost profit. And then finally, it is recruit more staff. So permanent in long term and then just contracted in the short term. So if you know that you are actually like getting new machines, then it might be a case of, right, well, we're actually hiring permanent staff and we'll keep going and keep producing. So why capacity utilization actually matters? So low capacity is under utilization and this is inefficient. Now, inefficiency means that the business is not getting the full use of machines and facilities. You are not using everything to its maximum potential. Right? Now, if you're at low capacity, then that means that you might have people just wandering around, not really doing much work. You're only using one out of like two machines when you could have two on and you've still got orders to fulfill. Overall, though, that increases costs because all of your fixed costs are going to be spread over fewer units of output. So no unit costs can increase. So if you think about it, if you are producing uh, uh, 100,000 units and you could be producing 200,000 units of uh, goods, then all of your fixed costs is only going to be spread over the profit that you'd be making from your uh, the, the revenue of 100,000 units. But if you doubled it, then actually they would be they would go down quite a lot and it means that you could allow yourself a lot more profit in your uh, in your actual goods per unit. High capacity utilization means increase in number of units output without increasing the fixed costs. So total costs are spread over more units. And then if we're working out units, so the unit cost is the average unit cost is the total costs divided by the number of units output. So it's total cost divided by output and that will give you your average cost. So the higher your average cost, the more profit you'll be making, the more uh, like that, the more contribution to your fixed costs would actually be there, which means that you'd be able to develop more profit. So cost of capacity. So since capacity is all about the output of a business, then it's easy to see what the costs are involved, right? So the main ones that we would look at is things like equipment, so your actual production line, machinery, etc. Facilities, so building rent, uh, insurance, like, uh, you know, the space that you've actually got and your labor. So wages and salaries of employees involved in production or delivering a service. Those are your main costs. So whenever you talk about cost of capacity, those are the three you need to think about. Think about what is being used to produce where it's being produced and who is producing it. So how do we deal with underutilization? So what we do is we look at increasing our demand. So you could change your marketing mix, put more promotion in, change your prices or your distribution, right? Get more sales or you can subcontract. So it's better to make some money than none, right? So if you like need to actually like go out there and get someone else to help you, then do it. Or we can reduce capacity. So that would be closing off part of the business. So like downsizing or rationalization, we call this, where basically you could get rid of, um, uh, you could just sort of shut down shops or you can close down like parts of your factory. Uh, if you look at uh, like some of the energy saving like ways that uh, companies do that to save money as well, then uh, maybe like turning off lights in certain areas that are robotic. Then we've got stopping overtime. So reducing the working week or risk redistribution of staff. So, you know, you could actually not allow people to do overtime. So that overtime is where people work more than their hours they're allocated, usually at an increased amount. 
So like uh, it could be uh, time and a half or t uh, double time. Uh, or you could reduce the working week. So instead of people coming in five days a week, they just come in four. Or you could move your staff around the business and actually see, OK, well, if they're not used in being needed in a certain area or uh, producing a certain product, could they be moved somewhere else? And then we need to look at our natural wastage. So it, as over time people leave, then if you, again, you know that like you're dealing with this underutilization, like uh, you just don't replace those staff. So if they retire, if they uh, are made redundant, or you sell off like factories or war warehouses, over, those are sort of your long-term solutions. So this takes a lot longer to get into play, but it just simply means that you allow the company to get smaller in itself to become more efficient. Now then, considerations on capacity. Uh, so you've got to make sure that demand changes over time, so future capacity must be considered. If you are seasonal, you need to know when your season is. If you are producing an item or a product that is going to have a very short life cycle, then you need to know when you need to start producing the next goods. Right. The key to long term success is planning to reach uh, to match long term change. So use of market research will help, but it is still a risk. So you need to actually develop. OK, so where are our chain? Where is our like market going to go? Is it going to continue on it the way that it is? For example, uh, mobile phones are looking at now developing into uh, foldable phones. Are they just going to be a fad or are they going to be the next generation? Are, what is the what are the companies going to do to actually match that? Are they going to all produce one? Are they going to get rid of their flagships that they've got at the minute? So short term changes usually provide flexibility. So things like seasonal one off uh, like sales or uh, orders, goods heading to decline in the product life cycle. But in the long term, then you need to look at lower unit costs as long as your prediction of demand is accurate. OK, thank you very much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Turn on notifications and video three will be following very shortly.